Hey everyone, and welcome to our simple science video. In this video, we're going to be looking at simple covalent compounds in our second part of our covalent compounds and covalent bonding series. All right, so in our previous video, we talked about covalent compounds that are made up of basically one type of atom in the periodic table. All right, and the aim of covalent bonding, as we talked about, is to obtain for each atom a stable noble gas electron arrangement. All right? So it depends on what is the full outer shell. For example, for hydrogen, the full outer shell of its atom would be two electrons. But for almost every other period, period two uh, atom that we will be dealing with at IGCSE, for covalent bonding that is, it has a full shell of eight. All right? So we talked about the notation which we can use to describe a covalent bond when we're doing our exams. So a double dash, single dash, and a triple dash representing how many bonds there are, how many electronic electron bonds there are in our compound. All right. So covalent compounds has covalent bonding, and it's not just in single nonmetal elements um, that make up a covalent compound. So I'm talking about oxygen. So it's not just one type of element. Our compound, our covalent compound, can be made up of many types of elements, such as mm, carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide or even something more complex like methanol. All right? So it's a covalent bond structure which has many, many other different nonmetal elements. All right? So each atom, similar to our, uh, our basic single atom, single type of atom that makes up our molecular molecule. Each atom must obtain a full outer shell of electrons to obtain their noble gas arrangement for their respective periods. All right? So mostly we're going to be dealing with 8 as the full shell. Of course this may be up to greater values. And uh, basic examples are such as water and methane. All right? And something you notice is that it doesn't matter Well. None that doesn't matter, but basically what they're trying to obtain is for each atom to satisfy its full shell uh, condition, all right? And another complex molecule would be ethene, all right? So in this molecule, we have double bonds, double electron bonds, and single electron bonds around this uh, compound, all right? So what this shows is that in any compound, in any covalent compound that is made up of elements in period 2 that are neutral, each atom within the compound must satisfy with its full outer shell arrangement of its basic noble gas, right? And another more complex, uh, not really complex, another compound would be of ammonia. And uh, in this case, it seems, uh, it looks a bit asymmetrical. This is basically because there's a lone pair, there's a, there's a lone pair in the central atom, and usually a lone pair in the central atom will determine its molecular shape. And I'm not talking about like our 2D image of it, I'm talking about 3D image of it, all right? which I'm going to talk about in the, in, in the next uh, couple of videos in molecular structure. Okay? So, we must also have to realize that single bonds are longer than double bonds. Why? The basic answer is because they are weaker. All right? Single bonds are weaker, and in your notations of it, you should demonstrate that they are longer because they are weaker. Try to, pull, try to pull basically one elastic band with the same force as you would pull two elastic bands. You'll be able to pull a further distance with a single elastic band. All right? So, it's a similar kind of thing but in this case you're dealing with electrostatic forces. And the molecules you will be encountering in this video or in the next couple of videos when we're talking about molecular structure are basically simple molecules. So simple molecules are basically molecules that have strong covalent bonds uh, so that's almost like every single covalent bond molecule. The covalent bonds are generally very strong and they act between atoms within a molecule. So for example in a carbon dioxide molecule, covalent bonds would be between the carbon and oxygen atoms and the carbon and the other oxygen atoms, uh, to, to the left, to the right, respectively, right? But you must also be aware of weak intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces 
basically means forces that exist between the molecules, not inside a molecule, between the molecules. That is different, all right? And this is responsible for keeping basically these atoms together and determining the density and the boiling point, melting point, and other certain properties of our simple molecular compound, all right? So, one of those properties that uh, the weak intermolecular forces are responsible for is the low melting point and the low boiling point, all right? So weak intermolecular forces basically mean that you can apply, you can basically break up these forces, not break up these forces, but like overcome these forces with basically less energy because they are so weak and therefore you can melt or boil these compounds at a relatively low temperature. So at a relatively low energy supply, you can basically break up, not break up, sorry, overcome these intermolecular forces quite easily. All right. They are also very poor conductors of electricity, and this is due to a really unrelated but mm, pretty basic uh, property of our covalent compounds that they do not have an overall charge. Right? Unlike an ionic, uh, anion or cation, they have an overall charge. And when they're in soluble solution, they separate. So they, therefore, they can carry a charge. But our covalent compounds, due to very strong covalent bonds, and certainly that they do not carry an overall charge because they are not um, passing on or accepting or donating uh, uh, electrons. They do not have a particular charge. They're sharing the electrons, all right? And they are also generally insoluble in water. And this is basically because most covalent compounds are nonpolar. All right, and water is a polar substance, and polar and polar, they like each other. They are going to dissolve better. So uh, our mo mm, simple molecules are generally nonpolar, so they would dissolve better in nonpolar uh, solvents such as ketone. All right. So let's go over this very quickly. So each atom must obey the octet rule, just like our previous video we talked about for. Um, compounds made up of single elements and single bonds are significantly longer than double bonds this is basically because they're weaker all right there are intermolecular forces that exist between the molecules of the the covalent compounds all right this is different from the covalent bonding that takes place within the molecules so this is intermolecular forces between the molecules all right and certain properties are that they have low melting point and a, high, and a low boiling point, almost at high there. And they generally do not conduct electricity because they have no, no overall charge. And they're generally insoluble in water. Why? Why? Because, simply, they are nonpolar. Okay? And they will not dissolve well in water as a result. Well, thank you very much for watching my video. Please come back and watch my previous videos on our IGCS revision series on chemistry and biology to make sure that you haven't missed anything in your IGCSE revision and happy revision guys I mean it's almost exams <laughs> all right see you later